Have you ever looked at a clear starry night sky and felt how small we are compared to the vast and infinite universe? Are we just a mere cosmic accident caused by a random evolutionary process? Is our life as insignificant as the life of a cockroach lurking inside the dirtiest places on earth? What is exactly the meaning of life? Hi, I'm Joshua Fantado and I'm the founder of the Becoming Christians Academy where I teach powerful lessons that will help you become the Christian God always wanted you to be. Today, I would like to discuss perhaps the most important question that man has ever asked. What is the meaning of life? This profound and mind-boggling question has mystified a lot of great minds throughout the ages. A lot have given an answer, but it seems that we are going farther and farther away from the truth. The true meaning of life has been hidden from most people. It has eluded most of the greatest thinkers of our history. Today, with the help of the Word of God, I will share with you the true meaning of life. In this master class, we are going to, number one, discover the three reasons why we must know the meaning of life. We must first know the great why behind our pursuit for meaning. Number two, identify the only place where we can know the meaning of life. If we are going to know the meaning of life, we must have a reliable, trustworthy, and proven source of truth. Number three, know the magnificent truth of the meaning of life. This is where we are going to answer the main question, what is the meaning of life? So enough with the introduction. Let's dive into the core of our discussion. Let's go to the first part of this class. Why should we know the meaning of life? To answer life's greatest question, we must first understand why do we need to know the meaning of life? Why should we care? What's the big deal? Can we just go through life without knowing the meaning of our existence? Well, my friend, the answer is no. Knowing the meaning of your life could be the greatest pursuit of knowledge and wisdom. Let me share with you three reasons. Discovering the meaning of life would give us understanding. During the past century, we have seen an explosion of knowledge. We have sent people to the moon. We have found a way to share information and lightning speed through the internet. We have made countless biological breakthroughs, engineering marvels, and technological wonders. Yet, humans have utterly failed to eliminate poverty, hunger, and suffering in this world. Do you know why this is the case? It is because human beings have fundamentally misunderstood and forgotten the true meaning of life. If you and I and the rest of the world know the true meaning of life, we can have a better world to live in. We can have a much better place to call our home. Reason number two, knowing the meaning of life gives purpose. It is sad how so many people live and die without even knowing the purpose of their lives. However, you don't have to be one of them. You can and you should know the purpose of your life and you will know that here in our discussion. So I strongly encourage you to stay with us until the end of our presentation. Reason number three, knowing the meaning of life gives you direction. When you know the meaning of your life, you know your purpose. And this gives you a direction in your life. You know where you start and where you should finish. It tells you the ultimate destiny of man and what our greatest potential really is. Now that we identified the reasons why we should know the meaning of life, the next question we must answer is, where can we find the answer? This leads us to the second part of our class. Where can we know the meaning of life? In the book, A Brief History of Time, Stephen Hawking, one of the most prominent atheists and physicists of our time, concluded about why human beings and the universe exist. If we find the answer to that, it would be the ultimate triumph of human history. For then, we would know the mind of God. The problem with Hawking's conclusion is that he believed that we can know the meaning of life through human reasoning, through human intellect. However, this is where he and the rest of the secular world made the biggest mistake. This is the reason that until now, even after thousands of years, humans have not really understood the purpose of their existence. 
we have been looking for the answer in the wrong places. When we rely on ourselves and remove God from the equation, we lose our only chance to knowing the true meaning of life. Some people would somehow find their purpose in life. However, this kind of purpose is something that will only satisfy them during their lifetime. Some would accept their purpose as saving the planet, running for the presidency, feeding the hungry, finding a cure for different illnesses, getting rich, exploring the world, climbing mountains, dying for their country, and making this world a better place to live. At the end of the day, there is still a spiritual void in their hearts that will never be filled with these worldly pursuits. It is very clear that no amount of physical things would be able to assuage our spiritual thirst. Every single person possesses a spiritual yearning in their life. Do you know why? Because God has put eternity in our hearts. Life without God is meaningless. Life without God is a life without real purpose. Our real purpose can only be found in God and there's no other place. It is astonishing to see how people fill their spiritual void in their hearts with the wrong things in life. At the end of the day, they still feel empty. If you understand your God-given purpose and meaning, everything that you know will never be the same again. You will look at life differently and see life through the perspective of God. Imagine discovering the meaning of your life for the first time. The meaning of life is also the very reasons you are breathing right now. This discovery is no like any other. It is the discovery that will explain why you are here, why you are born, and where you are heading. So where can we find the correct answer? Where can we know the meaning of life? If we are to find the true and exact purpose of our life, we should look at the right source. The scripture are popularly known as the Bible. Can we rely on the Bible to tell us the meaning of life? Of course, absolutely, 100%. 2 Peter 1 verse 20 to 21 tells us, Knowing this first that no prophecy of scripture is of any private interpretation, for prophecy never came by the will of man, but holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. This means that the scripture is written by man, but its true author is God. 2 Timothy 3 verse 16 added, All scripture is given by inspiration of God. The word inspiration here came from the Greek word theopneustos, which literally means breathed by God. Matthew 4 verse 4, a familiar passage tells us, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Finally, John 17 verse 17 tells us, Sanctify them by your word. Your word is truth. All of these verses tell us that the Bible is true and you can rely on it. So it is the only true source of the ultimate truth about how we can find the meaning of our life. We have already discussed why we must know the meaning of life and where to find the answer. And now we come to the third part of our discussion. And this is the most important part of our class today. What is the meaning of life? Now we come to the gist of the matter. What is the meaning of life? Listen to this because this is the answer to our question. The meaning of life, the reason why you are born, is for us to become the very sons and daughters of God. This is the plain truth, my friends. God created us because He is creating a family. God is a family and He wants to expand His family to include you and me. We are born because God is building a family. Do you grasp the enormity and immense meaning of this statement? The very purpose of life is for us to become sons and daughters of God. We will be like a God. Think about that for a second. The meaning of life is greater or even astronomically more valuable than all the combined wealth in this world. That's the reason why the Apostle Paul wrote, For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared 
with the which shall be revealed in us. He further added, I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of men the things which God has prepared for those who love Him. In short, the Word of God for those who truly follow Him is indescribable. Our human and finite mind can never even grasp how it is to be like a spirit and divine being in the family of God. Now that I have told you the purpose of life, it is time to prove that claim right from the Bible, the ultimate source of all truths and facts. Let's go back to the beginning of the creation of man. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. That's Genesis 1 verse 27. Right in the very beginning, God has planned that we become like Him. That's why He made us in His image. Of all the created living organisms, it is only man that has been given the privilege to be created after the image of God. Our first parents were given the first test of obedience. There were two unique trees in the garden. One is called the tree of life, and the other is the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Right there, God has given man the chance to receive salvation if they eat the tree of life. However, Adam and Eve disobeyed God and failed the test. Even in the Garden of Eden, God wanted Adam and Eve to pass the test of obedience, give them immortality, and be part of God's family. Over and over again, we have seen the father and son relationship within the divine family. Yahweh, the Most High God, is often referred to as God the Father, and Yahshua, or Jesus Christ, as the Son of God. This is the main reason that we read, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness. It did not say, Let me. This shows the plurality of God. It means that there is more than one divine being within the family of God. As of now, the God family is composed of two divine beings, God the Father and Yahshua. However, God wants to expand His family by bringing sons and daughters to glory. We read, I will be a father to you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. That's 2 Corinthians 6 verse 18. For it was for Him for whom are all things, and by whom are all things, in bringing many sons to glory. Hebrews 1 verse 10 From these verses, we can see that God wants to bring many sons and daughters to glory and become part of His divine family. Did you know that Jesus Himself referred to us humans as gods? Let's read John 10 verse 34. He said, Is it not written in your law, I said, You are gods? If you look into the Greek word of gods here, it's Theos, the same Greek word that is translated as God, which is used to refer to God the Father. Jesus is here quoting Psalms 82 verse 6. We read, I said, you are gods and all of you are children of the Most High. From these verses, we can see that being the children of God is equated to becoming gods. Of course, we need to realize that we are not yet literal gods today. We are still in the human flesh. Our final change will happen at the last trumpet sound. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 52 to 54 tells us, In a flash, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. For the perishable must clothe itself with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality. When the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable and the mortal with immortality, then the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. From this verse, we will finally become immortal beings. Spirit beings who are not anymore subject to hunger and death. This is the greatest and plainest truth that has been hidden in the eyes of modern Christianity today. The Apostle John Further added in 1 John 3 verse 2, Beloved, now we are the children of God, and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be, 
but we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Did you read that? We shall be like him. When Yahshua or Jesus Christ is finally revealed here in his full glory, we will literally be like him. To be like him means to be a spirit and immortal being. We have seen that we will be like God, having immortality and eternal life. But what will we be doing for all eternity? Are we forever be staring at the face of God and strumming our liar like what most people think? You see, that would be completely boring, dull, and even unexciting. Thankfully, this is a wrong concept of eternal life. The Bible reveals whom heaven must receive until the times of restoration of all things, which God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. That's Acts 3 verse 21. When we look into our world today, we see the world in chaos, great mess, and destruction. When Yahshua would finally be back here on earth, he will establish his peaceful and perfect kingdom to restore all things. And who will be with him? Revelation 5 verse 10 tells us, And have made us kings and priests to God, and we shall reign on the earth. We shall be kings and priests. We will be teachers and rulers who will help Jesus Christ in restoring all things. We read in Revelation 20 verse 4 to 6, And I saw thrones, and they sat on them, and judgment was committed to them. Then I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for their witness, to Jesus and for the word of God, who had not worshipped the beast or his image and had not received this mark on their foreheads or on their hands. Notice what will happen to the saints of God. And they lived and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. But the rest of the dead did not live again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he who has part in the first resurrection. Over such, the second death has no power, but they shall be the priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. So the Bible is clear that those who are resurrected when Yahshua returns will live and reign with him on the earth for a thousand years. They will help in restoring the world and teach people God's way of life. Now, what will happen to billions upon billions of people who have ever lived and died without having the chance to learn of God's truth. They are not forever lost as what popular Christianity would think. That would be unfair. God has a better plan. Let's go back to the passage we just read, Revelation 20, verse 4 to 5. And they lived and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. Notice, but the rest of the dead did not live again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. In Revelation 20, verse 12, we read, And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God, and books were opened. Compare that with Ezekiel 37, 1 to 17, Matthew 12, verse 39 to 42. God will give the rest of the dead a chance to learn God's truth. Those who are now the kings and priests to God will also have a role to play in teaching these people. You and I are now being prepared by God to become part of His kingdom. This life is a training ground. The purpose of life is not to accumulate wealth or pursue worldly dreams. Of course, these things are not bad of themselves, but they can be if we let them go between us and God. The meaning of life is clear. It is to make our election sure and be worthy of the high calling God has given us. Our ultimate destiny and purpose are to be part of God's family and forever reign in His coming kingdom. Now friends, in less than an hour of our discussion, would you agree that this has been an eye-opening masterclass? A lot of people that I have shared this truth with are just blown away from what they just learned. This truth has been hidden not just to the secular world, but also to the Christian world. You are now among the few who really know the meaning of life. Now, I have a lot of biblical truths, lessons, important topics to discuss with you. Perhaps 
you may feel a little overwhelmed by what I've shared in this masterclass. But here's what you need to know. I have just barely scratched the surface. This is simply the beginning of knowing, learning, and understanding the teachings of the Bible. Even if I talk all day, I can only share so much. For this reason, I have something special to share with you. My life is a living testimony of God's unending love, grace, and mercy. I have experienced God's divine providence and guidance every single day of my life. However, looking at the world today, I could see if there are a lot of people who haven't encountered God in their lives. I'm sad to see how so many people are missing out on the greatest meaning of their life simply because no one is telling them. For this reason, I developed this burning desire to help fellow Christians in their walk with God. This passion has led me to start Becoming Christians Academy, our best online course for Christians today. This academy will help you to live a more blessed, fulfilling, passionate, and purposeful life. Whether that means overcoming trials and difficulties, improving your relationship with God and others, or discovering the purpose of your existence. This course currently has three modules. The first module is how to become an effective Christian. In this module, you will develop the seven powerful habits that will transform you from an ordinary person to an extraordinary servant of God. The second module is how to live a victorious life. You will read 40 inspiring stories that will help you stop living a mediocre life and start living the life God wants you to have. The third module is how to strengthen your faith. In this module, you will meet 18 of the heroes of faith listed in Hebrews 11 and discover the lessons from their life. Enrolling in Becoming Christian Academy is super affordable. It is even cheaper than Netflix or Spotify's annual fees. I believe this is among the best investments you can ever make because it gives you a massive return to you, not just in your physical, but also in your spiritual life. You might wonder, why is it so affordable? Well, the reason is I want to give back to God what He has given me by helping others. Your support means a lot to me. To keep my website running, there are bills to pay, from electricity to web hosting, from hiring people to paying internet connection, all these need to be paid monthly. Luke 10 verse 7 tells us, For the laborer is worthy of his wages. The enrollment fee that you give helps me magnify my voice and reach more people. It gives me additional freedom and time to create more helpful blogs, courses, articles, and resources. The work that I do is individual work. I'm an independent worker of God who doesn't receive any compensation and support from any corporation or group. Thus, your support is highly appreciated. With that said, I hope you have learned a lot from our masterclass. It is my greatest desire that you don't waste the lessons you learn, but use them to guide you from here and to where God wants you to be. We have a magnificent and incredible potential. The meaning of life isn't simply to live and die. There's more to life than meets the eye. God has a purpose for you and you exist today because He wants you to be part of His kingdom. Let us not waste this golden opportunity and seek God's will in our lives. Well, that's it for me. I hope you take the time to check the online course and discover how you can become the best Christian God wants you to be. So, see you next time.